Okay, so this is soapstone. This is some really fun stuff to play with. Um, it can be machined by the Shapeoko. It can also be cut on a bandsaw. Heck, you could cut this stuff with a handsaw. It's not that difficult. It's very easy to sand. Uh, the one drawback is that this is made mostly out of uh, compressed talcum powder. So dust collection is definitely mandatory on something like this. I would also recommend wearing a mask. The mask I use is this one um, it's from Highland Hardware. I'll put links down in the doobly-doo. And it's a really good one because you can replace the filters on it. Uh, if you're like me and you're one of the bearded Americans, this gives you still a good seal around it. And it's great for cutting stuff like this. Now, you notice I've got two pieces here. This is going to be the bottom of our box, and this is going to be the top. And if you play with soapstone at all, you'll notice really quickly that when you get the blocks, they're a little bit uneven across the top. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to do a pass to kind of level this off first. And then we're going to go ahead and do our pocket and our sidewall. That'll make sure that when we cut our lid, we'll do the same kind of thing. And those two pieces will fit nicely together. So as designs go, this one is pretty simple. Um, I already knew kind of what I wanted with this. I wanted this oval shape here. Um, one unfortunate issue is that Carbide Create does not actually do ovals, which is a bit of a pain. But, however, Inkscape is perfectly capable of doing ovals. So I had an image that I really wanted to put on the top, which is this, this scarab piece here. Uh, this is one I downloaded off of Shutterstock, so it's a paid-for image. I'm afraid I can't share that one with you, but I will put links to it down in down below in the doodly-doo. Um, I just went ahead and got rid of this piece, and then I decided what I wanted to do was I would create my oval like this so that it perfectly fit this guy, right? And then... I went ahead and exported just the oval as an SVG file so that I could open it up in Carbide Create. Carbide Create then let me import it as this, and I could then use the offset tool to create a quarter inch inset here. And those would be the two main shapes that I use for this box. Now the way this works is all I really want is an outer. For the bottom piece, I want the outer and I want an inner pocket here. Now the other thing that I want to do is because remember the soapstone is kind of uneven at the top I want to do a leveling pass and what that'll be is essentially a pocket done on this as well but it'll only go so deep. So if we look at our tool paths I've got a smoothing pass here which covers all of this area right? then I've got the pocket down below and then the full cutout and I went ahead and put tabs on this you know just to hold it in and keep it from busting loose so that's basically it that's all there is to this one um, and again the other piece the top piece is the exact same thing right we want these to just fit together and like the bottom, I do a smoothing pass around there. That makes sure that when those two pieces of box come together, that they'll fit together nice and snug and there won't be like any uneven places in them. Uh, then what I was calling the top lip, which is just basically a cutout around so that the center piece sits down inside the bottom and then the cutout on the outside. So it's essentially like our old boxes, but it's just two piece, two uh, two shapes essentially that that we're putting together instead of the three with the inside lip. So that's how those go, and then basically it's a matter of you know as far as doing the V carve on the top, I just saved myself a copy of the same file and imported this guy right on top of it and positioned him so now that we've got this in the center we know if we center on that 
our design should be lined up in the center. You've seen me do this a couple of times before in some of my other box videos. So um, check some of those out if you're, you're unclear on how the centering piece works. But uh, let's go ahead and do some cutting and just give you an idea of how cool the soapstone stuff is. So one thing you have to make sure of when you're doing thick material like this is that A, you've got enough room when the spindle is all the way up for your bit to actually clear the top of this, and I do. The other thing you have to make sure of is that when you're cutting down to the bottom, you've got enough clearance so that your bit will actually make it all the way through without the collet hitting. And I just have enough. Um, if you do not do this, you will regret it. <laughs> Um, I've run into a couple of places where the first few times I tried to cut two inch thick material I didn't realize that's what was happening and the collet would come along and it would hit the inside and knock the piece out of alignment and at that point the bit would just send it whirling across the shop that's not good so don't do that um, so now that I've got this tested we're gonna go ahead and set up and cut Okay, so as you can see, even with my dust collection going, I still got a lot of stuff here. It's just, it's hard to get a good seal on something this small and this tall, so the brushes don't quite grab all of it. So you definitely want to take some extra precaution with this. Um, the one other thing I forgot to point out when you're doing deep stuff like this is typically you don't want to go any deeper than the cutting portion of your bit. Otherwise, you know, if you're, if you're doing something in wood, you're going to be rubbing the non-cutting portion against this inside and it's going to burn the wood. Now, soapstone fortunately does not burn, so I don't really worry about it as much. Um, but you'll notice these pieces just, they're nice and thin and they'll literally just break off when I take this out of the mold. I'm going to go ahead and vacuum up the rest of this mess and get it out of the way and then we'll go ahead and take it apart and show you the top being made. Okay, same kind of deal for our lid. We're going to do a smoothing pass on this. Um, it's about a tenth of an inch out between this side and this side. So a smoothing pass is definitely necessary. I think our oval will probably avoid most of this garbage here. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. The one thing about this is we're going to be cutting our lid essentially from the back, right? So the top of our lid is actually what's against the board. This will have a pass like this, which will match the inside of this piece. And then a cutout, which should match the outside of this piece. And let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, and here we have our lid. And I should just be able to get this slightly up. Okay, and you see those just kind of come apart. Be careful when you break those tabs off though, because you don't want them to, to break off to the inside. But this is our lid now. So we should have our box back over here. And our lid should fit down very nicely, just like that. And they, they form a nice little unit, uh, very equal size. And now we need to carve our design on the top. Okay, so if you've watched many of my videos, you're probably familiar with this. This is a centering jig. It's uh, just a piece of MDF that I've carved out a piece in the center that should match the inside of our box lid. It slots that in just like that and holds it into the center. This is set so that the rapid center position from carbide motion is going to line up right here. And then I can just clamp these guys down just to make sure that it doesn't wiggle too much and I should be good to go. I'm gonna leave the, um, the dust boot off for this because I want you to be able to see some of the V carving because it looks pretty cool. I will still be wearing my dust mask. So if you are a member of the safety police, please go away. Uh, 
Okay. Now that's a very nice carve. This stuff machines like butter. It's really wonderful to play with uh, if you use proper precautions. But I'm also going to show you something that's even cooler than this, and that's using finish on it. And I'm going to apply a small coat of boiled linseed oil to this and then buff it. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got these wet sanded now. Um, you want to just lightly wet sand them. They're, they're nothing you need to get soaked or anything like that. Remember, it is compressed talc, so don't get it completely wet. Um, also, be very careful when you're sanding them to hold on to them because if you drop one, they're toast. Um, now I'm going to take a little bit of this stuff, which is boiled linseed oil, and I'm going to apply a very light coat of this to these, and um, later on I will buff that out. But you'll see just from the light coat that I'm going to put on this that it does change the color significantly. So now you'll notice this is getting more of a, a jade green look to it. And I need to work it down inside those little grooves. But um, when this is all said and done, we'll have a nice kind of a sea green box. just let that dry and then we'll come back with a clean cloth uh, in about an hour or so and buff that out okay so here's our soapstone box everything nice and polished up our lid looks good the interior looks nice and everything looks practically seamless when you set it down like this it just I think this stuff is really fun you can do some really interesting things with it and the way it takes a carve is really pleasing I'd um, like to see some other people play with this and see what they come up with. So if you get a chance, um, post me some pictures. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Have fun.